Hey, everybody, and welcome to uh, Content Vid. Today we're talking about natural frequency and resonance. Before we do, though, I thought it might be worthwhile to just review standing waves because they're one of the fundamental principles that we're going to have to work with here. So uh, Lutz had uh, out of the classroom and into the Internet. So what we have here is an animation trying to show us exactly what's going on when we have standing waves right inside of um, some medium. Now this is fixed at both ends, so uh, it, think of it as like a rope where things are tied on on both ends, right? And what we're getting is we're getting the oscillator, whatever's causing the vibrations, to send a wave down. It's striking off of that end barrier and reflecting back. But the oscillator is going to continue to oscillate, so it's going to keep making waves. And when it continues to make the wave, that reflected wave that will invert because the end's more dense will interfere with the other one. So now what I'm getting is a combination of interference and reflection simultaneously in one medium, which means one thing, boom, standing waves. Now if we look here, we can sort of see those, those two waves, right? It fixed at both ends. This is the, the first harmonic or the fundamental. And if I increase this, right, I can increase and I can keep getting uh, larger and larger. Now, uh, if you'll notice a couple things, no matter what we change, right, the wave speed's not changing because wave speed is dictated by the medium itself. So if, if I were to change this medium, so if this is a rope and I were to increase the tension on the rope, that would obviously make a change. Uh, or if I were to use a different rope, that would make a change, a rope with a different linear mass density. But otherwise, this is fundamentally what we have going on here um, for, for, for this standing wave. Now, uh, what's nice about this, and I'll, uh, you guys, I'll post a link in the description, um, we have open end on just one side, fixed on the other, open on both sides. What I really like about this app, which I think is kind of fantastic, is this option here to show waves as sound. So you can actually see, like, we still draw them, right? But like, what's going on with the sound particles in there, I think is pretty interesting. But I have a special treat. This video, I actually, it's just three videos, I actually took in the classroom uh, two years ago when I was testing, and you can see right here, so right here, that thing that's right there, that is our mechanical oscillator. And what you can see that, that bit of purple, that bit of purple is duct tape. So string on here, duct taped on there. And what this basically does is there's a frequency generator that will, will vibrate uh, this up and down at, at different frequencies and different amplitudes. And if we hit play on this, you can see that it's, it's fairly clearly making a standing wave. We see right there, we have the nodes. Right, and then right here we would have an anti-node, but it looks blurry, right? And that's the idea of the standing wave, is we're gonna go there and back, right? But it looks like it's just sort of standing still. Right, and you can hear the, the frequency that it's making. Now, if we were to change the frequency, remember not all frequencies give us standing waves, specific ones do, okay? This is a different frequency, you can hear the sound difference, right? And so see how it's, it's a different wiggle, and then, so still blurry, this is my favorite. I took the video in slow-mo, so you can kind of see how it's really just that singular string, right? Uh, but with these strings, we actually get that little bit of blur going on. You can see the all the classroom, right? So fantastic. But, so we're seeing, right, this is the anti-node and the nodes, right? But it's a little bit different than, um, for instance, like that first video that we had where it sort of just looked all, all, all blurry, right? So it's actually oscillating back and forth, right? So now on to, on to the next sort of topic here. So our next topic for discussion is something called natural frequency. Now natural frequency is pretty easy to understand. Um, natural frequency is the preferred vibratory disturbance, the preferred frequency of a given thing. Uh, now, <laughs> easy way to find natural frequencies in a lot of stuff is just like tap it. Um, so if you, for instance, had a, a, a mug, right? And we hit it. Right, that's gonna be the natural frequency of that mug. It's, it's how it prefers to vibrate. Easy way to think about natural frequency um, is it, it's, it's that preferred oscillation. It's, it's like it's their jam, um, right? Uh, it's a bop. Uh, you could say uh, it slaps. So it, if you think about what would happen then, so if I were to have some sort of object, right? And I were to play uh, its natural frequency, it would be very excited. So like for me, if you were to put on a given amount of songs, 
currently maybe uh, Casualty by Lawrence. Like, that's a, that's a bop, right? I'd get very excited. I'd get a little pumped. Maybe uh, Center of Gravity by Boyzone. Maybe Jackie Boy's Equilibrium. Any of those, right? I'm going to hear them. I'm like, oh my God, that's my song. And because I'm getting so excited, right, I would then begin to oscillate. So that has some, some interesting impl implications. Back to the internet! So what we have here are two tuning forks hooked up to wood boxes, right? And now what's going to happen is these are identical tuning forks. If we strike one tuning fork, that box is something called a resonant chamber, which we'll get into resonance in a second. But that resonant chamber basically makes the tuning fork louder than it would be. Now, the sound waves in that resonant chamber are going to bounce around and they're going to leave the first resonant chamber and they're going to come into the second resonant chamber. Now, when they come into the second resonant chamber, these two tuning forks are identical in frequency. I believe they're 440 hertz. So because they're identical in frequency, right, when the first one's boogering and the sound waves goes in, that second one is going to be like, do you hear that? Is that my jam? Yeah, it is. And because of that, if we were to stop the first tuning fork, I wonder what we'll hear. Let's listen in. Let's see. Did you hear that? The second one continues. The, the second one, we can hear it, right? It's still vibrating. But I'm not sold on this. I wish I could see, see like another, another version of this. Remember our good friend? He did this too. Let's listen into his version. Middle C. Oh yeah, of course. We of hope course they're Middle identical. I, that would help for the Other demo. chambers, resonating oh. chambers. I'm going to strike this one, quiet it, and we will hear that one. Why? This emits 256 pulses per second, which are fed into this one. This picks them up and is set into oscillation. Listen now. There it is. Clear as the nose on. You gotta love how he gets super close. Cause see the, the mic is around his neck right here. So he has to get like crazy close to hear it. I, I, I love it. My face. I'm going to do it again in the reverse order. Listen. Okay. There it is. Now, how far apart could this be made to happen? Oh, great distances. Because this is exactly what your ear does. And you could hear me at some great distance, I'm sure. So great distances is relative, right? But I think what's important here is that we're getting this idea. Now, maybe you're not sold on this yet. Maybe you're not sold on this idea yet. Let's, hang on, hang on, I got one more, one more video. Now we got just a little bit different, like more of a, a tech version, right? So we still have the same resonant chambers, right? We still have the same boxes with the tuning forks, but now see that ping pong ball? So if that ping pong ball is, so it's up against a tuning fork, right? So if the ping pong ball moves at all, the only way for it to have moved would have been if the tuning fork hit it. So let's, uh, let's watch. Like a little, like a little tune, a little tune, a little, like a little jamboree there, right? So we can clearly see that that tuning fork is vibrating, right? And pushing, pushing that ball, right? So we're getting this idea of, of, of natural frequency, sort of preferred frequencies in terms of vibrations. Resonance. The idea of resonance is built off that natural frequency idea. So uh, the way it typically uh, is described a lot is on a swing set. So if you have a kid on a swing, it's swinging back and forth on a swing set, right? If you push them at the correct time, you can get them to swing higher, right? If you push them at a wrong time, you'll sort of mess up that, uh, that sort of concept of, of, um, of how high they're gonna swing, right? So if we, add energy to a system at the exact right moment, we can get what we'll call resonance. Now with resonance, what we typically get is a couple things. We typically get an increase in, in volume if it's a sound type thing, or if it's a physical object, we'll get, get an increase in the actual vibrations. And it could also be both. But the important concept is, it's all about that swing set, right? So if you think on the swing, right, as I'm sure you've pushed someone on a swing before, it, it, when they're at that right moment, you add energy at that exact right time. And now what's that exact right time? 
the natural frequency, right? So that's what we have going on here is if we can add energy at the exact right time, we can get some cool stuff. And you might say, Mr. Lindley, isn't this like a thing that like is like it's like pretty common and people like have done it before? Yes, yes it is. Breaking a wine glass with your voice. Oh yeah. Uh, this is Chase. My name's Chase and I live in California. California Chase. And he's gonna try to bake a, a glass for us. So let's, let's listen in with Chase. And I'm gonna try to- That's a parrot. Break this wine glass by only my voice. <clears throat> That's quite the cough. Whoa, no, YouTube. <coughs> you got the straw in there, because if it's vibrating appropriately, the straw will bounce around. He did not learn that himself. He learned it from Mythbusters, because they also did that. <coughs> Come Mama. on, Chase. It's taking forever. You did not, was the comment. No. Look it! I did! Yeah. I broke a glass! Okay. I broke a glass, people! Woo! So funny! Funny! No. Look it! I broke stop, the stop, glass! Stop, 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 stop! Notice the, the young sister gets close and it's like, no! Don't touch that. Older one, that's fine. I broke the glass with my voice! Isn't that just crazy? <laughs> Woo! <Hey. laughs> Look it! Yeah. Kids, don't rub your fingers on broken glass. Alright. Did you video? Yeah. The number of things I could say about not doing this at home. But anyway, what's going on here is we're getting that glass to vibrate because we're sending energy in there, right? And as we send energy in more and more and more and more and more and more. If we're sending it at the exact right time, those oscillations, that standing wave is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of amplitude. Eventually, we're gonna pass the structural strength of what's actually available uh, in, in the, the wine glass itself. Now this is a clip from Time Warp, if you remember watching some of those videos, and I want you to just watch carefully, watch this glass as it, as it begin to, begins to vibrate. Oh, this is amazing. What felt like the whole goblet vibrating is actually the rim this is amazing. Go back to this. This is the part what that I'm, like I'm all about. If you look right here, right? Um, you look here, right? And even here, right? So here, like almost like a cross pattern, right? Uh, so in those parts, we're getting lots of vibrations. But then right here and then here as well, we're getting very little vibration. Oh, so this take a look. is amazing. What right, very like little motion, lots and lots of motion. So those are our nose and antinose that we're getting. Now, resonance has a lot of other uh, great things uh, that we see in musical instruments um, and some other cool things, but we'll, we'll save that uh, for, for another video for another time. I uh, hope this uh, made sense. And, um, you know, uh, for now, thanks for watching.